No. Are you not behind? Get offered a cup of tea. I really don't like him. When he's sleeping, they can just. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. None of that now. Don't make me separate you. It's Ben, isn't it? And you're from. Sorry. Fargo, North Dakota. I work for Chief Gibson. Which one is he again? Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. So easy. Thanks. So easy. You can look past each other and walk coming into sight walk to an outside. He literally saw him out of the state. Say they found Constance Heck in the room at the South Nick Hotel. Guess she went out there for a conference. Oh, Constance! Kids. I mean, when's all this madness gonna end? New time soon. I surely don't know. Come on, Lou! Oh shit, but Betsy! <laughs> He's gonna miss it, isn't he? Just want to go over the details with him and explain her rights. They know I told them. <laughs> so I got the feeling you don't want me to come in. All things equal, Pops. We got a lot of swinging dicks around here. But oh. the man's been delegated. I mean here. You're not. Let's leave it at that. You okay in there, Ed? Peggy? Wire's secure and no one's a wiser. We got the upstairs room bugged and ready for the meet. Okay. Move quickly and with authority, troopers. That's lesson one. Yes, sir. Ice machine's busted. What? I'm just saying. It's your show. You've made that clear. Pools, just a minute. They're supposed to be undercover for the night. And undercover to them is where I'm all wearing the same white t-shirt and, and trousers. These guys are fucking amateurs. Bunch of fucking amateurs. They are gonna... You're dead. You're all dead. Play. They'll all be dead tomorrow. From this point on, we're radio silent. Shouldn't they have that on? Shit. Oh, God. Oh, Hank, fuck. I've got people everywhere I care about that I don't want to die. I've got Betsy, I've got Hank, I've got Ed and Peggy. Motor Motel, Motor Motel, come in. Motor Motel, this is Lou Salverson, they're coming, do you hear me? They're coming. They turn the fucking rate. At least there with Ben Schmidt, we know he makes it. It's Operation Eagle's nest again. This is insane! He's setting them up! They're about to go against the cops! Handy has lost his shit! Oh shit. Does Hansi kill Ma? Or does Ma kill Hansi? That's what I wanna know. Tell me she's got a gun. For you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mr. Inconspicuous Asleep Police Officer over here.
Take your hand, I'm gonna fucking lose it. See, Peggy noticed. Peggy noticed. Under the bed, Pegs. Come on, bathtub or under the bed? Preferably the bathtub. Come oh, fucking shit. City all over again. No! Oh, I'm getting my way. I'm so getting my way in this episode. Oh, there's in the first surprise. surprise. Hang, be careful now. became clear that Hansi was on a mission to find the beautician and her butcher's assistant husband and silence them once and for all. Why? Again, the question of why has puzzled historians for decades. The fact that he had shown his true self to them in a moment of vulnerability. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Lou! Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
have gone home with you. I forgot all about Mike Milligan. Well, shit. I think, Mike, you should just take credit for this and leave it at that. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, then. They didn't even have to get... I mean, it's a good day for them, isn't it, really? I can't believe he killed him. Damn it. Baby. He just cannot lose Betsy and him. Go. I can make it. <clears throat> Dinner Sunday. <laughs> I'll be in a suit of armor. What do you say after that? What do you say after that? This show keeps leaving me speechless. <sighs> oh man, honestly, I'm still emotional. Because I'm like, shit, if Hank dies now, and then he gets home and Betsy dies, like, him and Molly have lost, like, half their family and just gone. So that's why I'm so upset. It's thinking, oh, shit, this, this is going to be awful. And then I suppose if Hank dies now, he doesn't have to see his daughter die. And to be honest, he's already lost his wife. I kind of a little bit. You know, for Hank it would be better, I think, m moderately. He gets, he's died a hero, and he's died before his daughter. In his world, he could even be like, she could recover from the cancer. <clears throat> so it would probably be, that's a good way to go out for Hank. If he goes out, I'm not like, how could they? But I'm thinking from Lou and Molly's point of view, and bet, I mean, would Betsy even know? Oh, that was tough. That moment when you realise that like Molly is gonna go and find your mum and it's not gonna be good. And we just wouldn't have felt that without season one. Like we haven't seen a lot of Molly, little Molly in this, so I'm not sure how bonded I would be to her now if I didn't know the woman she'd grown into. So I actually think the major service actually that season one has done for season two is making things emotionally significant in a way that they might not have been or they'd have had to spend a lot more time in kind of exposition to, to achieve in season two. So I'm hugely grateful to see. I'm actually gonna have to watch season one again after this, because I feel like something has shifted. Like I wanna see all Molly's scenes again. I wanna see all the conversations with her and Lou again. <sighs> but Hansi had fully and utterly betrayed the Gerhards to the point there's no one left alive. It's over. The Gerhardt family, over. 
if Simone would have kept her mouth shut and run off for a couple of days, she'd still be alive, everyone would be dead. So there's another irony. She died attempting to, like, kill one member of her family if she did not bothered and just waited, they'd all be dead anyway. And she'd be free, not dead in the woods. The As you guys say, and I agree, I've said it with my wife when we've been watching it i do a rewatch with my wife of all the episodes i'm just like this whole thing is a, is a farce like a, an old-fashioned fight like a comedy of errors just one thing after the next it's like ev almost every decision someone makes there's this cause and effect and the end is always ironic it's brilliant i did not expect to have the shoe out at the motel in this episode it really didn't. I honestly thought when people were showing up and then it went dark for a second, I was like, oh, great. That, that's the end of the episode. But that was brutal. That did not disappoint. I tell you what, Ben Schmidt is alive only thanks to the good grace of Peggy. He would have been asleep and just shot in his chair. She saved his life. I, I tell you now. So, Ed and Peggy are in the wind again. They've got Hansy, like, hot on their tail. Oh, Bear, Bear's death was completely insane. I guess that what that's what Lou was talking about when he was talking to Laura Malvo, you know, that expression he saw on Bear's face and the experience of having like shot someone several times and have them run at you and they're going to kill you before they die. That's absolutely certain. And then a fucking Hansie's turn, Hansie's killed the mum. When she figures out what's going on, she turns around and he like, it was a horrible, long, slow stabbing that you, in, in cold blood, that you would really only do to someone that you truly hated. So I don't know what the backstory. I, I don't know if this is about that. Literally, he's like, I'm done with white people. I've taken all of this shit off you people. Fuck the lot of you. Like, that could be where he's coming from. Or it could be more specific. Like, did something happen? But either way, vengeance was reaped. I mean, it was horrible. I actually hated Hansi for that. In that moment, I really thought, what a prick. I don't think she didn't deserve that, I don't think. She really didn't. But she's dead now. And then in the midst of all this, as Bear's realised his mum's dead, he's like, shit, he's turned, he gets, go, he went to go after Hansy, he gets shot, you think he's going to go down, but he doesn't, he sees his Lou, he's charging Lou, nah, like this, Lou's choking, he's about to die, and then, pff, UFO, and everyone saw it, everyone there saw that UFO, so I was confused as hell now, because I really was like, I thought the UFO was like a motif thing, just sort of like lovingly dropped in there as a as a sort of paying courtesy to the UFO mania of the era. But no, the, that I saw it, everyone there saw it. It looked weird. It looked like it was made of light, but something was coming down from it. The UFO distracts Bear long enough that. Lou manages to get his gun and Bear's brains are vaporised. So this UFO keeps turning up at some really opportune moments. I'm trying to think when they've shown up. Because the first one got Roy Gerhardt killed because he wouldn't have been stood there like an idiot in the middle of the road if he, if he hadn't seen it. So Roy died looking at well sort of like he started to, his death process began by looking up at a ufo now bear dies looking up a ufo 
Hansi's already seen, he sort of felt the UFO, but this time he's seen it. And Betsy. Betsy saw it, didn't she, when she was taking a pill? Like, it wasn't a UFO in the sky, but she was distracted. And the sound, like, Hansi heard. Line of the episode goes to Peggy. Like, it's a flying saucer, Ed, we gotta go. It's just a flying saucer, Ed, we gotta go. I... That is lovely. I'm gonna have to watch that again almost immediately. Just superb. Superb. And I mean, you had high expectations for this as well. They've been plugging this thing since season one. We've been hearing about this massacre at Sioux Falls. So I'm extra chuffed that they managed to deliver on that. And it, we're not even done. I have no idea what's going to happen now. We've had the massacre, I think. There's bodies everywhere. But what is season 10 going to have? Because season 10, we've still got Hansi, Ed, Peggy on the run. We've got Hank. We don't know whether Hank's going to live or die. We don't know what the fuck's going on with Betsy and Molly. And we don't know what, actually what Mike Milligan is going to do from here either. Is this a blank? We've got no clue. But I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. I can't wait. I'm not going to watch it immediately after this one because... I'd like to give a little bit of time between the final two episodes of a season so that I'm properly going into the finale completely up to speed on everything, but I'll probably do it tomorrow. That was fan. Oh my god. I literally can watch it again. I could literally watch that again right now. I might. That was fantastic. Thank you all for watching. And thank you to everyone who was telling me how good this season was and recommended I watch it. I'm, so, I'm not regretting my decision. I am definitely reacting to season three. I can tell you that now before we've even got to the end of season two. We, I will be reacting to season three. I'll just go straight on. Um, and like we said earlier um, in the year, what we'll do is after season three of Fargo is done, then the catch up show will be The Expanse. So... For those of you that have maybe already watched season three of Fargo and you know it really well, now is the time to start watching The Expanse so that you can get enough ahead of me, if you've not seen it already, that when the reactions start coming through, you'll be on it. I, I really do encourage anyone who's like, oh, I've not seen The Expanse to watch it, because apparently it's this fantastic programme that, you know, like The Leftovers, we were like, why didn't the whole world know about this show? It's one of the best shows ever made. I, if I could ask 10 people in the street about the leftovers, I bet you one would know about it in this country. So this is an opportunity for us not only to kind of share shows that you've seen and I haven't, but maybe I can help introduce you to shows that neither of us may have come across had I not started doing the reaction channel. So I would encourage you, go and start watching The Expanse now if you want to get on those reactions. Obviously, you've got weeks and weeks. Um, we've got maybe, I don't know, five or six weeks before we would start on The Expanse. Hmm. I encourage you. And until the next time, bye-bye.